Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue our study of electricity and magnetism, with each section getting a little bit more in detail about what we're studying here. And in this section, we're going to conquer the topic of electric field due to a charged ring or a charged disk. So let's recap briefly where we've been. We started in the beginning of the course just talking about the general uh, nature of, of, of what's around us and that charged objects attract and repel depending on their uh, charges, right? And then in the next section we said, well, all of these charged objects have what we call an electric field that kind of emanates around them and that electric field interacts with other charged particles causing them to move and that's what comes and brings about the Coulomb force that we talked about in the first section of the class. Now in the, in the third section we had some systems where we had multiple point charges, maybe two or three charges and we said just like you might kind of guess having done physics this long that if you have two or three uh, sources of something the way that you handle that is you sort of uh, calculate the individual force or electric field due to, to one of those guys individually, each of them individually, and you simply add them together. So it obeys superposition is really the bottom line is what we're trying to say here. Just like everything in physics 1 and physics 2 and nature is just just behaves that way. When you can break a problem down into multiple components, you can calculate the effect of each component and add them up. And that's what we did when we had the multiple point charges. Okay, now what happens when we begin to talk about real life objects, uh, like maybe a baseball, or in this case we're going to talk about rings. So let's think about hula hoops. Visualize a hula hoop here. What if we had a hula hoop out in front of us, made of plastic, and we put a charge on it? You know, just sprinkled some extra electrons all around the plastic, evenly distributed around that ring. And the question is, what kind of electric field is that going to produce? Now what we're going to do, giving you the big roadmap here, is we're going to study that in detail in this section. I'm going to show you how to derive it just so that you know where it comes from because it's not really magical but it is very instructive for you to know how to, to do at least one of these things on your own. But what we're going to find is that the method we're going to employ here, which is always going to work, but it's just going to get mathematically, um, I don't want to say it's hard, it's just not practical to do it for real objects because it gets too, too difficult. What we're going to learn though is that in the following sections we're going to use Gauss's law and some of these other things to make our job easier at, at looking at what the electric field is doing. But before we get to Gauss's law, which is sort of what you would really use in, in the real world, we're going to calculate uh, the electric field due to this charged ring and we're going to do it using uh, just our bare bones calculus and, and sort of first principles, okay? So remember back to that third section, we had an individual charges, one charge, two charge, three charges. These could be atoms out here. We calculated the electric field due to each one of them. And if we wanted to know what the electric field was here due to three charges over here, we would simply calculate the electric field in the directions and the magnitudes and we would vectorially add them up and whatever you know, we get over here is the answer is what the electric field is here. Now if you're dealing with a real object, a, a real object that has billions of atoms, trillions of atoms, um, maybe you sprinkle some extra uh, charges uh, on there, maybe you sprinkle a few extra million point charges onto this ring. Well how do you handle that? Well you obviously can't literally calculate the electric field due to every single one of those million charges. I mean you could do it if you had enough time but that's not really practical. But that's precisely what we're going to do using calculus because if you remember the whole point of calculus, well not the whole point but at least half of the point of calculus is to be able to add up an infinite number of objects. That's really what it's doing. So what we're going to do is use the power of the integral to add up the contribution of all of the little electric fields that are generated by every little extra charge we put on this guy but we're not going to actually add them up in a calculator, we're going to do it with an integral which is a nice way to add up an infinite number of objects or in this case it's going to be a finite number of objects but a very large number of them of infinitely small little, little guys which in this case are these little atoms. So let's just go right on into it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to recap here. We're just going to say for point charges, which is what we talked about uh, here in the last section, uh, we simply summed up we summed up the uh, the electric fields that were contributed by each of these charges. That's how we calculated the uh, uh, resulting guy. So the electric field due to each charge. 
And that is how we actually calculated the resultant electric field. Okay? So what we're going to do here, I'm going to write it down in world, words, for real objects. And what I mean by this by real objects is you have millions of these little charges and you can't actually add them all up so what we do is for real objects we integrate over we integrate over the surface of the object to get the total electric field that's exactly what I said some people like to read things, some people like to hear things, so I do it both, both ways. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to draw a picture here. So let me go ahead and, and get rid of this. Okay. Now let's go ahead and draw our ring. It's a hula hoop, remember? It's just a, a, a ring. So what we're going to have here is let's, let's do it like this.